Thank you so much, Chris, for that introduction, for the welcome. Uh, it is such a privilege to be here with you at St. Mark's, and it is a privilege to stand in this place where my friend and colleague, Reverend Michelle Morgan, serves. Let us pray. Almighty God, I ask that the words of my heart and the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be strengthened by your glory now and always. Amen. Amen. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. These much quoted opening words are from Sonnet 43, as many of you perhaps know, written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning to her husband, Robert Browning. They are the words which actually come to my mind on this Trinity Sunday, the Sunday when we confess and acknowledge the glory of the, the eternal Trinity, and thus the Sunday we reflect upon what it means for our God to be triune, that is, three in one. And so why, you might wonder, is it that Elizabeth Barrett Browning's poetic words, how do I love thee, let me count the ways, come to my mind on this Sunday? Why do they have anything to do with the, the what some consider confusing doctrine of our church, that God is one and three. Why? Just as these words signal the love poem in which Elizabeth expresses the depth and breadth and height, as she writes, of her love for her husband, Robert, they suggest for me, indeed, perhaps for all of us, the love dance in which God reveals the depth, the breadth, the height, of God's love for us. To speak of God as Trinity is to confess and to acknowledge the profound ways in which our one God loves us. How does God love us? Let me count the ways. God first and foremost loves us as a creator breathing us into existence, into life, as God's very children. The Lord created me at the beginning of God's work and the first of God's acts of long ago, our reading from Proverbs tells us. How does God love us? God loves us as a savior, a savior freeing us, freeing us from the sins that betray and alienate us from the sacredness of our very creation and indeed from our very creator. And so it is that Paul writes in Romans, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And how does God love us? God loves us as an advocate, forever guiding us in the way of truth and peace that is God's promise to us all. When the spirit of truth comes, Jesus says, he will guide you into all truth. It is in this way, church, that God reveals to us and we experience the breadth depth, and height of God's love for us. And so it is that we have traditionally proclaimed that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so to capture the grace that is God's profound love. It is also no wonder that if there were a synonym for God, that synonym would be love. For to speak of, to know, and to experience the love, of, to experience God, is to know a God that is defined by love in God's very essence, in God's very being. 
to know God as creator, as a savior, savior and advocate, is to know the love dance that is our God. This dance is what the early church fathers described as perichoresis, a Greek word that, come, that gives us the word choreography, hence describing God's dance with God's self, God's eternal dance of love. But so what? What does all of this have to do with us today? What does all of this mean for us as we, on this Sunday, reflect on and confirm our belief in God as Trinity? What does it mean that our God is Trinity beyond the, the confession, beyond the confusing, perhaps, doctrine of the church? What meaningful difference does it make for how we are to live and for who we are to be as people of God? It means fundamentally that our God does not give up on us. For to know God as Trinity is to know a God that has entered our history as creator, savior, and advocate, entered our history loving us, loving us into loving into loving ourselves, loving one another, loving God's world, and indeed loving God. Church, the creating love that is God is God loving us into a life-giving relationship with all that God has created and breathed into existence. These are relationships defined by nothing less than guarding and protecting the sacredness of the earth and all that is therein. And these relationships began with affirming the sacred life-giving breath of every single human being, including our own. For make no mistake about it, if we violate anyone else's sacred breath, then we are indeed violating the sacredness of our own. And I must say that there is nothing that takes my breath away any more than seeing another human being being humiliated, belittled, put down, degraded, or destroyed. I was literally rendered breathless hearing George Floyd cry out as Eric Garner did before him, I can't breathe. What does it mean that our God is Trinity? It means that our God is loving us into loving the sacred breath that is God's creative love for us all, and thus loving us, loving us into honoring the very breath of life that is all of ours to breathe, and loving us to do nothing, to do nothing that might betray or take that breath away. And that brings us to the saving love that is God. For this is a love that is loving us into freedom. It is loving us into a freedom from the sin that is the systems, structures, isms, and ways of being which prevent us or any of God's creation from thriving and growing into the fullness of who and what it is that God has created us to be. It is loving us into a freedom that frees us from that which alienates us from our better selves and betrays the very love that is God's for us. And so it is that the saving love that is God's is a love that is calling us to show up, to show up to do the messy, courageous, and sometimes dangerous work of leading the world, leading the way to a world, a society, where, guess what, all are free. Where all are free from the sin that is poverty and homelessness, free from the sin that is racism and bigotry, free from the sin that is the destruction of guns and more guns, free, free from the humanizing, de degrading, and deadly realities, realities, and thus freed, 
freed to enjoy the truth and justice that is God's love. Where, as I like to say, the first are last and the last are first, not because there is a reversal of fortunes, but because there are actually no first, there are actually no last. All are treated and respected equally as the divinely loved beings that they are. What does it mean that our God is Trinity? It means that the saving love that is God is loving us into a freedom on earth that is the justice of God's heaven. And this brings us to the advocating love that is God. This is a love that is loving us, loving us into the very promise of God, the promise that God will be with us always as we go about reflecting the love of God in this our world. And so it is. So it is we have no excuse. We have no excuse for not being bold in our words and courageous in our actions, showing forth the very triune love of God. For what more do we need than the love that is the promise of our God to partner with us, sustaining, empowering, and in guiding us along the way as we partner with God in bringing the world closer to that just future that God wants for us all. And so, what does all of this mean for us as we on this Sunday reflect on and confirm our belief in our one God who is three? St. Mark, as we gather here on this Trinity Sunday, we do so at a time in our world in our nation and in our society that seems to be defined by the violence of hate that is poverty and homelessness, the violence of hate that is Christian nationalism and xenophobia, the violence of hate that is white supremacy and misogyny that is transgendered bigotry and LGBTQ terrorism, and it goes on and on and on. There is no denying it. Ours is a world that is not the way God loved it into being. It is not the way that God wants it to be. And so it is that our God as creator, savior, and advocate is forever steadfastly loving us into loving so that we can become that world, indeed that people, reflecting the image of our very God, who is nothing less than love. And so church, as we sit here on this Trinity Sunday, if, there, if indeed our proclamation that God is one and three, that God is Trinity, means anything to us at all, then we must accept it as more than a declaration of faith or a proclamation of some confusing doctrine. But rather, we must accept it and see it as an invitation from God to join God in the love dance that is God. Simply put, to confess and acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity means nothing less than witnessing with our lives the way in which God is loving us into the love dance that is God. How does God love us? Let our lives count the ways. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Amen.